Alienation is when we feel like a stranger. We don't feel a part of things. Alienation began to be something studied by philosophers and sociologists and psychologists in the 19th century. Alienation was something that um, Karl Marx was very interested in, in. And even though alienation began to be studied only in the 19th century, alienation is actually exhibited and revealed in Genesis chapter 3. One of the things that happens that happened when our first parents sinned is they, they felt alienated from their own bodies and they wanted to cover themselves up. They also felt alienated from God because they hid from God. God showed His physical presence. Well, I shouldn't say that. God showed His detectable presence, a presence that could be perceived in the Garden of Eden. It says, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they ran away from Him. They hid from Him. Now, there's a way of teaching that we call the Socratic method. And what that means is that we teach by asking questions. Well, the Socratic method did not begin with Socrates. The Socratic method began with God and it began in the Garden of Eden. And what the Socratic method means is that the teacher does not ask for the purpose of learning. The teacher asks for the purpose of teaching. Jesus asked questions. Jesus did not ask those questions because He didn't know the answer to the questions. He asked the questions to teach us the true answer to the questions. So, does God know where Adam and Eve are hiding? Well, of course He does. But He still asks the question, where are you? Chapter 3, verse 9. The man says, I, I heard you. I was afraid of you. I'm naked, so I hid myself. Now, he says he's naked. Look at verse 7. The first thing they did after they fell was they made clothes for themselves. But those clothes did not cover up their sense of nakedness in the presence of God. Remember the, the word Genesis means beginning or in the beginning. Bara a sheet. That's the first word in the Bible. And we said that in Genesis 1 through 11, events are prominent. Genesis 12 through 50, personalities are prominent. What are the events? Well, creation, the first man, the first woman, the first marriage, the first sin, the fall. Also, we see the first instance in chapter 3, verse 7, of false religion. When they tried to cover their shame with their own efforts, that's the beginning of false religion. What are they doing? They're dealing with their guilt. They're trying to save themselves from the guilt that sin brings. There's a wonderful preacher in New York City called Timothy Keller. And Timothy Keller talks about what he calls self-salvation strategies. When Adam and Eve made clothes for themselves from the leaves, from the trees, that's a self-salvation strategy. They're trying to cover up their sin. Now, we have this very theological word. It's the word atonement. What it means practically is covering. When we talk of Christ's atonement, what are we talking about? We're talking about the way that Christ covers up our sins. What are they doing when they felt ashamed at their nakedness and they made leaves to try to to cover themselves. Well, they're making an atonement. They're making a false atonement for themselves. That's what religion does. It tries to make an atonement. But the atonement they make is not adequate because they still run from God. They're still afraid to face God and they still feel shame because of their nakedness. It says in verse 7 that they make clothes for themselves. 
But it says in verse 10, Adam says he was afraid because he was naked. So the clothes didn't work as far as what he was trying to do. God says, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? Well, before he admits that he has eaten from the tree, he makes an excuse. He said, the woman that you gave to me, the, the, the woman that you gave to be my companion, she gave me from the fruit of that tree and I ate it. So what's he doing? He's saying two things. First of all, he says that it's her fault. And the second thing he says is that you gave her to me, so it's really your fault. Now, I don't have the privilege of going to church in Russia. And if I did, I wouldn't have, because I don't live in Russia and because I work on Sundays. So usually when I go to church, I don't get to hear a sermon, I get to give a sermon. And if I did have the privilege of going to church in Russia, I would not understand what the preacher was saying. But I will tell you, the thing that is absent from preaching in the West is the conviction of sin from the pulpit. We are preaching a gospel that cannot wound and cannot heal. And let me tell you that one of the surest signs of the new birth, one of the surest signs that the Holy Spirit has taken over, one of the surest signs that you have become a child of God is when you stop blaming somebody else for your sin. And when you stop blaming God for your pain. That's a sure sign that you're receiving a new nature. And yet, the preachers in the West wish to avoid the subject of sin and the subject of guilt because guilt and shame are not nice feelings. And they want to have a crowd and they want people to come back. And they're afraid if people don't feel good that they won't come back. So they try to make them feel good by not mentioning sin and by not mentioning guilt and, not by, and by not mentioning the state of condemnation before a holy God that sin has brought us to. And that's exactly where Adam was after he was sinned, after he had sinned, and before he was saved. Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the fruit? Well, yeah, I did eat of the fruit because this woman gave me the fruit. You remember this woman that you gave to me. You gave me the woman. She gave me the fruit. It's not my fault. Now, Remember what I told you a while ago. The critics say, well, we've got other, we've got other creation narratives from the ancient Near East. We've got, we've got another flood narrative. We've, we've got a flood narrative from the Gilgamesh epic. Go read the Gilgamesh epic. And see if you find yourself in it. See if you discover spiritual reality there. This is the first thing that ever happened in ancient, 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 ancient history, lost in the abyss of time. But it's about us, isn't it? It's about our sin. It's about our guilt. It's about who we are. It's about what we do. How could that be possible? It was written such a long time ago. It's describing such an ancient, ancient reality. It's the Word of God. That's how it's possible. And that's one way we recognize it to be the Word of God. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.